Hello all you amazing people. We are going to have a little bit of a talk today. And you probably click this video because of the title about how I escaped uh, escaped a cult. And yeah, I've been in a cult. Uh, newsflash, everyone has been in a cult and everyone probably alway, all, already are in a cult. Like a cult is basically just a more bad way of saying that you're part of a tribe, you're part of a group and stuff like that because cults typically is associated with doing bad things. But technically, if you are blindly following or blindly trusting or blindly being part of a group of or the people that could to some degree be looked at as a cult. What was the cult I escaped? Well, I escaped probably the biggest tech cult that there is. That some say that Tesla is a cult. Uh, you know, Tesla people look at the whole Tesla brand as a cult. The Elon Musk followers has been looked at as a cult. In my situation, I escaped the good old Linux cult. And I know I'll get a lot of people angry, but hear me out. Better start at the beginning. So when I was like a teenager, like many years ago now, too many years ago now, sadly enough, I repaired computers. I repaired fixed and sold computer hardware. I, I repaired computers every week, every day, all the fucking time when I didn't work or didn't went to school. And a guy noticing that and not in the creepy way and we started to talk he was probably my age now probably a little bit older became kind of like a little bit of a semi-father figure to me in that at that age when if i'm thinking about it and he was an it guy and he taught me a lot about it but he also gave me a challenge he gave me a book with a cd on it called red hat linux 4. Point whatever as it was called back in the 90s and he was like see if you can install this and i'm like okay and i went home I think it was either, I think it was spring break. I think it was spring break. Instead of going out and getting drunk and stuff like that, I installed Linux for the first time in a spring break. And I was like, wow, this is nothing like Windows or anything I've messed with till this day. Let me do more research. So the limited internet access I have was spent researching Linux, other operating systems like BOS, OS2, and all of that fucking shit. Linux kind of got me into alternative operating system. And because of Linux, I tried OS2, Warp, 4, Haiku, not Haiku, BOS, Minute OS, Sky OS, all of the OSs that you could dream of from the late mid, late, mid to late 90s to early 2000, I was going nuts. And the more I read about Linux and open source, Source, the more I used it and the more it became my daily driver for I think like I about 2001 was like when I really committed to Linux as a daily driver uh, but I, I used it ever since that day when that dude gave me that challenge there and I was like wow let me read up about open source and I was reading a lot of articles and a lot of fucking blog posts I'm like I like what I hear this makes sense I like it. Then I started to dive, dive, deep dive into the whole with the Storm and GNU, GPL, Free Software Foundation. And I'm like, yeah, I can kind of see this making sense as a teenager. So I bought it hook, line and singer. And the more I got into it, the more I just blatantly, blindly trusted everything with the Storm man and the Free Software Foundation said. And I, I was... I was one of those people that believed so much in open source and free software and the free Fourth foundation and all of these associated things with Linux that I would go out and actively seek out computer stores, computer hobbyists, IT professionals to try and convert them to Linux. Again, we are talking before YouTube, okay? I was I was running into computer store in my free time and bitch and moan about them having Windows machines on the storefront. You could probably in, in like the late 90s or 2000 if you lived in my town and you went into a tech shop you could more than likely have seen me having a heated debate with some store clerk or something like that or a manager about them not selling linux and not promoting linux and not having linux and microsoft and proprietary software is the most evil thing in on earth every job i had when i started to have a job or could get jobs like real jobs like a nine to five jobs every time a guy from the it departments come i was like ah, catch your body i would run over to through them or yank them onto my fucking uh, cubicle not cubicle but my my work bench and stuff like that and i would be like microsoft bad you should all be using my win linux and it's cheaper and blah 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 laying out the case that you see, like i was talking like this to troop luke smith metal outlaw chris tight like combine all those into one uber 
Linux nerd. That was me to all of these people. Again, mostly before YouTube and even, you know, when YouTube was around, I think YouTube came around 2004, I was doing, I was doing the same fucking shit. Running around, having hours and hours debate with people from all over the, 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 the IT spectrum about that they should use Linux and they are doing a bad thing for the world. Basically, I was telling them that they were basically ruining Earth, you know, they were killing Earth. They, they like, I told them, like, you're killing starving children in Africa and all that fucking shit you are a sheep and every debate ar uh, argument every th everything you have heard a linux user use as an argument for linux even the bad ones and the toxic ones i have used in real life to real people not just on the internet i did the, the exact same thing all of you guys and girls are doing on the internet right now. I did that in person to an IT department head, to a manager. I did it in person to sales reps, to sales people, to callers. I went out and did it in person and I got nowhere. <laughs> and I was more and more frustrated because even at that time, if they gave me a really good counter argument, I was like, ah, I can kind of understand what you're coming from. I don't agree. And I wish you would be using Linux, but I understand that it would cost you more money or the the, the, the the software that your company is using and depending on won't work on the Linux. So your whole company could not exist if you were running on Linux and the money it would take to rewrite it for Linux would be more money that you can expend because typically I work for smaller companies or today you would call them upstarts to some degree, just in, in the, you know, physical labor, you know, like um, machine building, construction and stuff like that. So they couldn't just throw $100,000 away to rewrite their whole fucking infrastructure to support Linux. And spe specifically back then, where if you wanted to run Linux, you also had to have, have hardware that supported Linux. So more or less all of them had to go out and buy new hardware, which they couldn't afford, even second hand. So they had all of these great fucking arguments and I got more and more frustrated. And I was like, every time I talk to someone, I get knocked over and over in the head with really good fucking arguments. What's going on here? Am I, am I blind? Have I missed something? I started to doubt myself. Dude, what's going on here? So I started to really, really research. Linux, open source, the Free Software Foundation, Richard Stallman, like really go deep into, okay, how did it all start? Why is it like the way it is? What is the mentality of these groups and stuff like that? I have probably watched at, at, at the time when I was really deep diving into the Free Software Foundation with the Stallman, I probably consumed every fucking video about with the Stallman and with with the Stallman on fucking YouTube, every interview, talk he did and stuff like that. And the more I started to research what they were about, the more I started to be like, these guys are fucking crazy, man. This makes no sense anymore. Th this is not what I expected it to be. This is what's going on here. And I and I started to, to draw a lot of parallels between organized religion and the Free Software Foundation, everything that goes with it, and cults and the Free Software Foundation, everything that goes with it. And I was like, fucking shit, I'm part of a cult here. And it's not a good one either, because they, they don't allow other views, opinions, or people to be part of this world. You know, they don't want proprietary software. They don't want Microsofts and companies like that in, in this world. They want to actively not have them here. And that was kind of when my brain is like, what? Why? That, that's not being tolerant. That's not being inclusive. That's not being open-minded. Like, like, like with the people I talked to, I may highly disagree with them, but I didn't want them to not have a job. I didn't want them to not be here. I didn't want them to lose their job because they wanted to run Linux, you know, even though I, I want them to run Linux. And, 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 and I thought I knew everything about Linux at that time and what it was about. And then I started to do market research and it's still out there to this day about companies and, and organizations that have moved from proprietary to open source and from Linux to or from Windows or Mac to, to Linux. The overall arc, when you take like the, the, the cost of ownership, the cost of long-term ownership, the up qualification or retraining, of the staff, the, the reprogramming, the reacquiring, relearning software and stuff like that. It went down to like, depending on how much you had to do on that, it e either it was even more expensive in the, let's say the first five to 10 years to move to Linux, or you only saved about 10%. At best, that was not the average, that was at best. And I think today it's, it's still about that 
that avenue, a lot of people, they will lose a lot of money and not really saving any money by running Linux and open source software because of losses of quality employees, retraining employees, loss of efficiency and more bugs, more issues with the software, they need to rewrite a lot of systems and blah, blah, blah. And then they have to spend three, four, five years before those systems become mature enough compared to what they already are running. And I'm like, okay, you're only saving, and I say only, like 10% of a billion dollars is a lot of money, for example. But when you think about it, 10%, that's probably, these probably spend more on fucking picnics for the company and stuff, you know, like merchandise, and, and, and they, they probably have budgets of meaningless shit that's higher than 10%. So like, and especially smaller companies, like 10% of thousand dollars is, it's not that much, you know, it, for them, if they only have like a revenue of a couple of thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars or fifty thousand dollars a month, 10% for them is a picnic or a day out with the company or something like that. So I'm like, okay, what's going on here? And then one thing that really fucking caught me was that I took a little bit of a step back. I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to watch any Linux thing. I'm not going to engage with any Linux and free and open source thing. I'm just going to use Linux, do what I want to do, go partying a little bit extra and just be a normal fucking young adult. And then like a year after I came back and was like, ah, I miss this Linux thing. And I miss seeing what the Linux world is up to and stuff like that. And we are talking probably about 2010 and 11, 13 here. And I started to go back into it. And I'm like, people are saying the exact same thing I used to say for or five years ago. The narrative have not altered at all. And I noticed that if it became really easy to spot a free software foundation with a Storm and fanboy, because they all say the same shit. It's almost word for word what they are saying. No matter what the car you are or points are, they are saying the same shit. My company can't run Linux and open source and free software because what we need is not there. They say the same, oh, you should, because it's the best thing. It's the, for the betterment of humanity and it's the moral thing to do. Did you not listen? I can't. I physically can't. I don't have the money to develop that specific, these specific software systems we are using. Well, you're hurting the world. You, it's the, it's for the betterment of uh, and blah blah blah. And open source will be the future. They were saying the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over. That's what cult members do. That 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 is what people indoctrinating into a place where they don't have a free will do. That is a pe what people do that is part of an organization where the message, the, 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 the leader's demands is that's the most important thing. It's like people citating, you know, verses from the Bible all the time as a car, car counter argument. Not saying that Christian people are bad. I'm just saying that it's kind of the same thing. And I'm like, why do I see so many parallels between organized religion, cults, and and, and a software? You know, a, a license, a, a, a method, alternative way of doing development. Why do we see all of these parallels to organized religion when it has nothing to do with religion? Why do I see all of these parallels to toxic political parties when it has nothing political, it has nothing to do with politics. It's a piece of code, software, philosophy and stuff like that. Could it be company politics? Could it be development politics? Could it be software politics? Kind of, but not politics like we're thinking about politics in the White House and in your local governments and stuff like that. And my eyes were like opened and my brain was like what the fuck is going on here and i felt for the first time in many many years when it came to linux i was actually thinking for myself i was not just regurgitating what some higher ops in the free software foundation of richard storman have said i was actually starting to listen more to people i was starting to listen more to windows users and to other people users of other operating system software licenses i was starting to listen more to developers and it people about how and why they did their job instead of telling them instead of demanding instead of judging them and i learned so fucking much from going over to listen and asking questions instead of demanding preaching 
and judging. And it was really difficult <laughs> for me, to be honest, because at that point, Linux has already, already been part of my life, like since my, my, my teen, so over 10 years. And my whole identity, like a lot of you guys and girls out there, was that I was a Linux nerd. I was a Free Software Foundation, GNU, which is Stallman, fanboy and, and advocate. That was one of the biggest thing in my life. And the more I listened, the more I asked questions, and the more I was like, this don't matter at fucking all. Nobody really gives a fuck. Nobody gives a fuck. And the whole way that that the, I was just regurgitating everything that other people said as argument points made me a sheep, a drone. A follower. I was not thinking for myself. I was not acknowledging that sometimes Linux is not the answer. Sometimes open source is not the answer. Sometimes the GNU license is not the answer. When I started to allow those thoughts into my fucking life, I learned more in a year than I did 10 years not allowing those thought patterns into my life or acknowledging that the world is not black and white when it comes to technology and software. And I started to hate the person I used to be. I started to become embarrassed of running into my local store and and yelling and screaming almost to sales reps about Linux and why it's not there and oh you have all of these Macs and Windows and the thought that other people could listen listen to me or hear me and I thought that I was this fucking intelligent brilliant fucking guy that have seen the holy quail and I was teaching the world how badly they have seen the tech world and the computing world and I'm like oh my god I would slap myself in the face if if some if I was listening to myself today. I would be like, stay away from that lunatic. It's like, you know, Harley Christmas or Jehovah's Witness stopping you on the street and preaching to you and stuff like that. It's like, you know, almost like an ISIS fucking recruiter running around in your local mall. That was the feeling. I, I, I felt like I was an ISIS recruiter to some degree. I felt I was trying to indoctrinate other people into a brainless, mindless, thoughtless cult in the name of this is the best thing to do and i hated it i hate that i hated that feeling i really did and and i started to talk to more and more non-linux people i started to research more and more still to this day i research this shit and i started to talk to a lot of people i have not talked to in many many years or wouldn't talk to in many many years you know any people that were not linux fans people that didn't like linux people that didn't work with linux or thought it was the best thing ever. And it opened my eyes so fucking much to how the world worked. Because I, here, here's another thing, because I didn't tell them to run Linux, I didn't preach about Linux, I didn't judge them for not running Linux. They were more open with why they were doing what they were doing, why they were using what they were using and how they did it. And when I got into that kind of mindset with them that they allowed or they were comfortable enough To, to say like, oh, this idiot is not just a fucking toxic motherfucker. He actually wants to listen and learn. I could understand them. I could be like, it makes total sense. It makes total sense what you're saying to me right now. It makes so much logical sense why you are not using Linux or open source. And, and one one of the other things that really started to, 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 to get me doubting is the thing here is that especially when I was talking to IT people and IT department heads and stuff that is like, don't you think that we know about Linux? We are IT people. And don't you don't you think that we have done the calculations if it makes sense? Because if we could save the money or save the company money, we could probably get a fucking bonus, you know? We could probably get a, a raise. We could probably get, you know, uh, you know, employee of the month. Like, we would probably be regarded as really good employees if we could save the company a shit ton of money or be more more efficient or more stable and more uptime. Don't you think that as proper educated IT people, we do these kind of evaluations and research all the fucking time? I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. And don't you think that according to what we, the math that we have done, it makes no sense or the potential benefit is almost nothing. So why change? I see where you're coming from there, Mr. Big Head, Mr department manager, Mr. IT person. And recently, I, was, I, I got a job this year, in the beginning of this year, where I do a lot of IT, IT infrastructure, development, research and development, a lot of fucking shit. Almost anything you could dream of with IT, I do it at this job here because it's a small, you kind of call it an upstart company still. 
So I do everything. And we have like dedicated programmers there and dedicated, you know, uh, workers that do work with their hands and whatnot. So I, I'm on both sides of the aisle there and talk to both kind of people. And the more that I actually work with fucking IT, the more I get exposed to how crazy this whole Linux mentality is or free software foundation mentality is that proprietary software out of the door, companies like Microsoft out of the door, open source, free software, and the free software foundation, the TNU licenses and likes are the only way of doing things and should be the only way of doing things. The more I work with IT, the more I can see and how wrong that fucking mentality is. It's not a one, one cloth fits all in IT. There is so many ways of skinning a cat. There's so many ways of doing it. And some ways for some companies and some departments and some group and organizations makes more sense than others. The fun part is the more I talk to people in the Linux world that actually work with fucking IT, things like me. It, it's funny that the majority of people that was like I was back in the day was people not having anything to do with IT other than doing IT as a hobby, didn't make money on IT, didn't work in IT sector, had nothing with IT to do other than when we were off work and done all, we fucked all the ladies, we drank all the beers, then we sat down and we messed with Linux. That was the only thing we did, or that was the only exposure to IT we have. That world versus working in IT professionally is night and day. And I only experienced that when those kind of people that did work in IT started to listen to me because I listened to them. When I stopped demanding and yelling but started to ask questions and listen, they took me into their world and exposed me and showed me how that world worked even if I was not working in IT at that time. They would sit down and explain, this is why we do this, this is how we do it, this is the calculations we have done, and blah, blah, can't you see and understand that this makes no sense then? They didn't do that to me when I was preaching and yelling and screaming and demanding. And the more IT people kind of, not say take, took me under their wing, but they were listening to me, and I was listening to them, the more I understood that what people think IT world is, is not that. The world YouTubers that never have worked with IT think the IT world works, nothing like that. The way that you see people like um, DistroTube, Mental Outlaw, and those people, the way they talk about IT, not how the fucking IT world works. Chris Tice Tech has worked in the IT world, so he knows a little bit about how that fucking world works. And that's why he's one of the better ones of those folks, even though he still have drank too much of the Kool-Aid. But he's a little bit more grounded than the others are because he actually have worked in IT for many years. And you can see that in the way that he conduct himself and talk about IT. He's not so obnoxious as let's say DistroTube or some other people that just can do a little bit of hobby coding and stuff like that. Until you're coded with other people for a company that have demands, you have no fucking idea how it is to be a coder. I had no idea how it was to be a hobbyist versus a coder until I started the job I have right now. Because sitting at home doing a bash script and doing a, a Python program for yourself and or for other people and put it on GitHub or put it into a repository, that's nothing. That's fucking nothing. When you're starting to make systems that nobody else has made in the fucking world, you're starting to implement AI and other systems in ways nobody else have done, and you start to see how professionals are doing it. You start to understand how little you fucking know. You start to understand how weird the world is in IT and programming and coding and stuff like that versus how we think it is. It's a little bit like, this is probably the best way of explaining it, it's a little bit like someone that has never had sex explaining to you what sex is versus someone that have had sex explaining you what sex is. See you all later. Bye bye.